to move will dictate the future of the human race. In fact, it may even save the world. Now you may be thinking, hey Jay, that's a bit much. You've just been out here for a few seconds. But I'm gonna tell you after decades working in transportation that what I'm saying to you is the truth. You know, it's a funny thing. The word transportation has become a dirty word. In fact, I'll let you in on a little secret. The handbook for the TED Talks says you should avoid talking about transportation because it bores people to death. I'm gonna take my chances. But let me step back for a little bit to the beginning of this story. When I was a little kid, I used to ride the New York subway with my father. And we would get into the train, we'd go to the very front of the train. In those days, there used to be a window at the very front of the train. My dad would lift me up and I would peer out that window into the tunnel. And I would pretend that I was driving that train. Now, 50 years later, I was back in New York. And I wasn't driving the train, but I was the head of the entire New York transit system. This was my dream job. It's your hometown, this is what you want to do. So, to my surprise, what I quickly found out was that everyone, and by everyone I mean eight million people in the city of New York, everyone thought that what we were doing wasn't good enough. Now, a few years after that, I had left New York. I went to Hong Kong to run the MTR in Hong Kong. This is truly one of the world's great metro systems. It's clean, it's fast, it's convenient, it's on time. It's always on time. 99.9% .9 on time. One out of every 1,000 trains would be late. And I thought that was incredible, right? And little did I know that the people in Hong Kong thought exactly the same thing as the people in New York. Not good enough. So what's going on here? I think I have figured it out. It turns out that the word transportation isn't the dirty word. The dirty word is incrementalism. When you're hired to run the, the New York MTA or the, the Hong Kong MTR, you're bound by the boundaries of a system that was designed and built decades ago. In the case of New York, that's 120 years ago. And in that type of system, almost by definition, incremental improvement is the best that you can do. I didn't think that that was enough. I wanted to do something bigger. I wanted to do something more. And that's why I joined Virgin Hyperloop One as CEO. Now, Hyperloop is the first new mass transit system that we've had in over 100 years. It's going to travel at speeds approaching 1,000 kilometers an hour. It's going to connect cities in minutes. Yes, go. <laughs> it's going to connect cities in minutes, and it's going to do it all without any direct emissions. And it's really modern, right? It uses an advanced magnetic levitation system and that ride will be so smooth that you'll be able to hold a cup of coffee at 1,000 kilometers an hour. And forget about train schedules, the tyranny of train schedules. This is a turn up and go system. It will be there when you want to go. So this is starting from scratch. This is starting with a clean sheet of paper. And it's challenging. I think it's probably the most challenging thing that I've done in my career. But I think it may also be the most important. And here's why. 21st century problems deserve 21st century solutions. By 2050, we know that two thirds of the world's population will be living in cities. Can we even imagine what that means for congestion in Mumbai. 
We're also told by scientists that we must cut our carbon footprint in half over the next decade, or our planet will face irreversible and catastrophic damage. Think about that statement, it's incredible. If we don't take quick, decisive, and effective action, our planet will suffer catastrophic and irreversible damage. Now these are 21st century problems. And it turns out that incrementalism isn't the way to be able to deal with it. We are sliding backward despite the improvements in electric car manufacturing, despite the investments that we're making in public transit system, despite the investments in new forms of mobility. We need to be doing more. We need a giant leap. But you might ask, what does a giant leap actually look like? So I've been doing a lot of work and travel now in the Middle East, and I'll give you a sense of what it looks like there. In the Middle East, a giant leap is 45 million people a year riding on a transit system completely off of the grid, powered only by solar energy. It's a system that can be built for less cost than high-speed rail, and yet will run three times as fast. It will give us the ability to run as fast as a plane with one-tenth the amount of energy. So let's start imagining what it means. What does it mean when you can connect uh, cities like their metro stops? What does it mean when you can connect airports and ev avoid building another runway? Imagine the businesses that you would build. Imagine how it would transform your cities. Imagine what it would mean for your family. It's literally a whole new world at your fingertips. And that's why I'm really excited also about a project that we're doing right here, Hyperloop from Mumbai to Pune. Okay, let me ask you a question. How far is it from Mumbai to Pune? Now, I've been going around asking this question a lot, and I get pretty consistent answers. Four hours, some people say three and a half hours if you're lucky, but they always pretty much tell me not to count on being lucky. You know, the answers are consistent, but they're all wrong. The right answer to that question is 120 kilometers. It doesn't make any sense to translate distance to time on the basis of the congested roadways that we have today. There's no reason to do that. <clears throat> Mumbai and Pune will always be 120 kilometers apart. That doesn't change. But with Hyperloop, that journey becomes 28 minutes. <laughs> 28 minutes, now that's a great leap. Now we can reimagine the connection between these two cities. Now we can think about twice as many people moving between the cities as are moving today, and at the same time, being able to cut our carbon emissions by 150,000 tons a year. And look, I'm a transportation geek. You know that I get excited about that. But I'll also tell you that some people think that I'm insane. So I was recently on CNN. I was being interviewed by Richard Quest. And he turned to me and he starts talking about the transit challenges I faced in my career. New York, London, Hong Kong. And I thought he was going to turn to me and congratulate me on the things that I had done. But no, he asked me a question. He said, are you a masochist? No, I'm not. I'm an optimist. And I'm determined. I really believe that we're in a position where we can make this happen. And I'm excited, by the way, that India is in the forefront of what is happening with this right now. <clears throat> I 
I'm not going to tell you that it's easy. It takes time. It takes money. It takes innovation. All those things are hard. But the returns are massive. And we only need to look at our history to really, really understand that. When trains were invented, trips that took days turned into hours. When planes were invented, trips that took months turned into days. We know what happened with those inventions and the transformation that was unleashed as a result of that. And when we have Hyperloop, trips that take hours will be turned into minutes. And that transformation will happen again. So let me close by telling you something that happened to me recently that made me very, very happy. I welcomed my first grandchild into the world. And I was holding this boy for the very first time. And my son looked at me and he said, hey, dad, do you think he'll be riding Hyperloop by the time he's a teenager? I paused and I said, yes, uh, he will. And you can imagine that um, that question reminded me of riding the train with my father when I was a little boy. You know, my whole career has been in transportation, but it's, it's not really about planes or trains or buses or hyperloops. It's really about people. And when I think about that little boy, he's barely a month old. I have a faith that he will inherit a world better than we found it. And I know I know that starts with a giant leap. Thank you very much.